study in 2005 that showed every person in America over the age of 20, it was one out of every third person admitted to smoking weed at least once in their lifetime. That is a huge number of our population. It's less harmful than tobacco, alcohol, and prescription medicines. It is an insane world that we live in where doctors will freely prescribe Xanax to patients with anxiety that don't need that. Xanax causes so many problems. It's so bad for you. And over here shows like deaths of prescription drug, drugs, 32,000 a year. It says, hey, even marijuana is safer than peanuts. 100 people will die annually over peanuts. Zero people have died from smoking weed. Now, counter arguments might say, oh, you can get lung cancer, but that lung cancer develops because people are smoking weed in tobacco papers, which you can smoke weed healthier, bombs, vaporizers. It, that's not the cause. Weed isn't the cause of it. It's the tobacco papers. Washington and Colorado have already legalized it, and 20 other states have accepted it for medical use. With rising acceptance, economies are booming, patients are getting the treatments they need, and people are finally taking their power back. First of all, this law is currently violating our individual rights and liberties. These rights include, but are not limited to, the right to pursue happiness, the right to dictate one's own body, and the right for privacy in one's own home. Harmful substances and acts are subject to punishment on the basis that they are harmful to users and bystanders. So basically that's saying alcohol, I think we can all agree it's harmful to the user, but it's legal. Tobacco, it's harmful to the user and to the bystander, secondhand smoke, but that's also legal. Yet marijuana, who's killed not, like no one, is illegal based off of that. Another reason they say it's legal is because it's immoral. However, in a huge court case, Lawrence versus Texas, it was on uh, gay rights, the right for gays to be married, the Supreme Court ruled that constitutionally, the fact that a state's governing majority has traditionally viewed a particular practice as immoral is not a sufficient reason for upholding the law to um, prohibit the practice. So why do we even have this? An opposing side can say, oh, you know, marijuana is very addictive. However, have you ever seen someone receive the shakes from not smoking? Have you ever heard of someone getting heart palpitations from not smoking? Yeah, a headache and a bad mood, those are effects of not getting a good night's rest. But there was a doctor that wrote a book on the addiction of marijuana, and he said that in this case, the addiction is a term used to blame their actions on something else. And uh, basically, the law also states that if an intoxicated person assaults another, you punish him for assault. You don't punish him for intoxication, meaning that if a drug or substance affects you in some way, what you do on that substance is all a result of your own self. And it affects everyone differently to each his own, you know. But all other people claim, you know, it makes Americans lazy, but TV makes Americans lazy. And last time I checked, that was legal. Also, it does not cause emphysema. They did a big study on that. As you can see, Michael Phelps, who's the most colored Olympian of all time, he smokes weed. <laughs> How do I get in the next slide? Oh, yeah. Okay. And also, it makes people lazy. The president, when he ran for office, he used to be in a gang in high school called the Chum Chum Gang, and they would smoke weed every day. He admitted to it. He does not anymore, so he says, but he used to be the president of the United States. Um, medical reasons, most more than anything, if it's not accepted for recreational use, should definitely be accepted for medical use. It reduces the effects of chemo and uh, AIDS and anxiety, and it's listed on the American Cancer Association's website under possible treatments, and that website is the number one most credited website for cancer everywhere. And so if the federal government isn't, like, supporting it, then why is it on a government website for the American Cancer Organization? Um, also, you might not believe that it helps, but my mom, personally, two years ago got diagnosed with colon cancer. She ended up getting clean from it, but then a few months later they found it in her abdomen and in her liver. So now she has three types of cancer. It's incurable. She's going to be doing chemo for the rest of her life just to keep it down. 
the first two months she started on chemo, she lost 50 pounds. And she became so unhealthy because chemo makes everything you taste taste like metal. They don't want to eat. My mom didn't eat for like two months. I mean, she would force herself to eat, but she would throw it up again right after. And uh, so my sister, who's a nurse, was like, Mom, you know, I'm not saying this as a kid who like, you know, goes out every weekend or whatever. I'm saying this from a medical standpoint. You should look into trying something. My mom has never smoked a day in her life. She never smoked cigarettes, was always against weed, but, you know, drank occasionally. Um, my sister was able to get her THC oil, which you just drop in your mouth. You don't smoke it. It's completely ingested, and it helps her hold down food. She doesn't throw up as much. It helps her nausea. Also, um, they figured out it has an antibacterial property that can halt the growth of tumors and even possibly cure cancer, arthritis, and control seizures. But the only problem is there is lack of avail available research due to legal stipulations. <laughs> Last reason of all, it can boom our economy tenfold. There's money to be made, and right now that money is being made by criminals. Studies by economists, e economists estimated it could generate $10 billion in tax revenue per year as opposed to the billions being spent from taxpayers to enforce prohibition. Put dangerous criminals out of business. It's ridiculous that we have to dangerously put our lives on the line to get what we want. People are going to smoke regardless. It's still illegal in federal law. So in states like California and Colorado, there are shops selling weed legally in that state, but the feds can still come in and, you know, they invade that shop and send all of those people to federal prison. So obviously if people are still taking that chance, then, you know, it, prohibition isn't working at all, and the war on drugs is nothing. I have a few more points, but I'm just going to.